My mother had me when she was young. You know, she she always said that she feels like we grew up together. <laughs> and sometimes it feels like that, particularly <laughs> particularly when I get to an age that she was at. Um, you know, like when I get to when I got to 25, I thought back, like, what, what was my mother doing at 25? When I got to 30, what was my mother doing at 30? Um, and really just kind of comparing our lives um, in regards to our age. But <laughs> when I was younger, that was really when I got into adulthood, when I really kind of reflected on what my mom was. But when I was younger, that's your mom. So she is your authority, she is your mom, she is the person who disciplines you, she is the person who is tender to you, sweet to you, your mom, all the things that your mom is. <laughs> so I didn't realize, you know, some of the things that she was going through in her younger years. And as you all might know, my mom passed away in December, and so there's a lot of times that people would come to me, before, you know, after her funeral or, you know, a month or two months after that. And they would kind of reminisce on my mom and tell me stories. And there was a story that kind of sparked a memory. And I wanted to tell y'all about it. So my mother's friend, Damon, he was so sweet. He was so nice. And, you know, like just a cool guy. He was, he's nice. He was a really nice guy. And so he hits me up in my inbox and he was like, man, I, your mama was a firecracker. I remember the first time that I met her, she was on a bus stop burning Robert's clothes. Now, this was hilarious to me because Robert is my youngest brother's father. Robert is also the first, I don't want to say my first, I don't know. It, he's the first adult man that I was attracted to. I guess that's what you can, yeah. First adult man that I felt some type of, you know, attracted to. And he's my youngest brother's father. And when he says that she was burning his clothes, it was hilarious because maybe Robert sent my mother through it, <laughs> through all kinds of mess. And I can understand why she was burning his clothes because at this time, we lived in these apartments way out west, uh, on the west side of Indianapolis, and they were called Lakeview Terrace. And it was probably like 89, 1989. Yeah, so I was like nine years old. And so my mom, even though at this time she was like 23, going on 24. So think about a 23-year-old girl with two children. Um, and she's actually pregnant with her last one, her third at this time. Yes, early stage pregnancy, not like late stage, early stage pregnancy. So... Because my mom is young, but because she was raised by Southern Mississippi women, my mama's taste in music was um, more Southern, like into blues and R&B. You know, she'll listen to, you know, there was some rap that she had got into as she got older, um, but, you know, and dated people who had a, a, you know, rap taste, but her taste was more like blues, or old school R&B, that type of stuff. So when she would go out, even as a early 20s, you know, woman, she would like to go to places that was kind of a more of an older crowd. Um, you know, this would, this would be from Indiana in this era. This would be like the Elks, shit like that. And I'm just saying these names just for people who are from this area, they get the vibe. <laughs> this is like an older people crowd, you know, 30 and up, but she's like 23. <laughs> I remember in these apartments, there was this older woman 
who loved my mama, who loved going out with my mama. She was an older woman, pretty, um, maybe like 40, 40 something. She had to be like 40 something, I think. But I was nine, so my, I don't know. At, at nine years old, you know everybody old to you. <laughs> but I would think she was like 40 something, maybe. I know she definitely was older than my mom. And so she could have been her 30s, but I'm imagining she's in her 40s. But she was a pretty woman, and she loved my mom. She was gorgeous. And she had a son named Bear. Bear was about 15 years old, chocolate boy, tall. Um, always helped my mom. I, he was just like a little, you know, like a little gentleman, little boy, little teenage boy. I was nine, he was 15. And he would come over our house and like he would do nice stuff for my mom, like get her, like if he take out his mom's trash, he'll come and get my mom's trash and take it out. He was just like a cool little dude. He just was like a cool little dude. So he was always around the neighborhood. He was nice. He was never like giving me any kind of, you know, like other dudes in the neighborhood, they would be giving me, you know, that's a sissy, that's a fag, that's a this, that's a that. But he would never do that. He wouldn't be, like, he really kind of didn't really speak to me at all. He didn't really engage with me at all. He really gave, engaged mostly with my mom and his mom. Um, sometimes I would hear his mom cussing him out <laughs> if he was getting in trouble for something. You better go in there and wash your dishes because they how their apartments is, how these apartments were, were in one building there would be four units, but then in the next building, in the next building there would be four units. But you can hear what's going on because they were so close to each other. Like if if our door is open, like our balcony door is open, and their balcony door is open, you can hear them and what they're doing. So that's how close we were. And so you would hear her, you better come in here and wash these motherfucking dishes and da 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 and going off. Same thing my mama would be doing <laughs> for whatever reason. She would be doing, you know, going off too about something. Um I was a loner child. I didn't, because of, by this time, you know, around 9, 19, I was 9 at this time, but, you know, around this time, my queerness had been really, really established. <laughs> like, I knew that I liked boys. I knew that, um, I hadn't had sex or anything like that, but I knew that I was different than other kids, and that I wouldn't forget it, and they wouldn't let me forget it. <laughs> So, this is when I was, this is the time of my life when I was kind of being more unnaturally timid, um, unnaturally antisocial, unnaturally quiet, because I was a precocious, talkative, social child. But once my femininity started to blossom or it started to social, socially be a very, very distinct thing that people noticed. It started to isolate me. It started to make people bully me. It started to make um, girls treat me different in a way. It started to make adults treat me different in a way. Everything started to change in how I was. I went from being this person, this little person that was praise for being bright. I was a, uh, everybody considered me a bright child, um, intellectually bright, um, but also bright as in colorism too. <laughs> so there was a, it went from a uh, pleasurable experience, them being nice to me, being cool, <laughs> all these kind of things to being shitty and trying to control, um, try to snuff the femininity out of me. Um, doing things to make me more masculine. Uncles was punching me to make me toughen up and um, forcing me to fight people who I didn't want to fight. You know, calling out, don't be switching. Anything that would... And it, if some people who was more direct and more violent -y and more, you know, like my uncles, they were more violent, punching you. But then, you know, like... My mom, she was never mean. She just would be like, boy, it's not that. It would be, previously, my mother thought it was cute 
<laughs> my mother thought the feminine stuff was cute. Like when I was like around, you know, six and seven, it was, ooh, do that dance. Ooh, do that, um, do that, um. I remember, I think I, I talked about this before. Um, the movie Sparkle, giving him something he can feel. I would wrap the towel around here and wrap like a uh, either the towel around my head or put the put my head in the hole of a t-shirt and and hang it down <laughs> where it's like my hair and honey and I'll pull it to one side, giving him something he can feel. <laughs> and I would do that part from Sparkle. <laughs> You let him know this love is real. <laughs> and my mother would, if there was some company over, she would say, Do that, do sparkle, do sparkle. And they would laugh and it would be funny and it would be, Oh, <laughs> he's silly. It, it would be cute. Once I became like nine, ten, once the teen, tween years started to happen, it wasn't cute anymore. And people were, um, Policing it way more harshly. Um, so, sometimes it was subtle. Like I said, my mom would be more subtle, not violent. Um, like, oh, don't do that. Uh -uh. Teachers would make little slick little comments. Not any kind of bullying from them, but very slick um, micro queer microaggressions in school. Kids were kind of extra. You know, I hope I'm explaining it right. It just started to change. Anybody who experienced this, you would kind of know. It just started to change from being, I'm a nice little kid, to mm, getting a little gay. So, let's, let's stop. <laughs> and so, at this time, I was hanging out with this girl named Erica. And Erica had a brother. They had video games like I did. And Erica was infatuated with my hamster. I had a hamster. And she would love to come over to see my hamster because her mom was kind of mean, so she wouldn't let them get pets. And when I would let her use my hamster, I would get to go over her, not use my hamster, but come over and see my hamster. The, the, the trade-off was she would let me come over to her house and I could play their video games. They had a video game called uh, on Nintendo called Darkwing Duck <laughs> and Chip and Dale and just these games that I absolutely love to go over there and play. And yeah, it was it was fun. I had to, I had just got into the bit by the video game bug, <laughs> and so I could go over her house and I could play it. And her dad was really really nice. And her dad was, which which is kind of crazy. Because now that I'm looking back, her dad would act real funny to the other boys. Like real funny as far as mm -mm, they can't spend a the night, they can't they can't do nothing. But me, because I had this queerness that he clocked, he would say little things like, I ain't worried about him. I know where he gonna be. <laughs> he would say things that for a child they thought that it was not you know, it was not, they didn't know I could clock what they were talking about, but he would say little stuff like that. Like, he wasn't worried about me. He was, oh, yeah, we ain't, ain't got to worry about that one around my daughter. <laughs> it was very that kind of tea, which was kind of wild, which, which was, thinking back on it, it's kind of wild and crazy, but he didn't, because I so did like Erica. I do think that she liked me, but I did not like Erica. Erica's brother was more my type. <laughs> and uh, but Erica's brother, because I was queer acting, he'd be like Whoa. he'd be acting weird and antisocial. So I just came over to play video games and that's what, what it that's what it was. So my mother had found out that she was pregnant. Mother had found out she was pregnant. And so, during this time, she's like, yo, I'm about to start going out to the club. Because her and her baby daddy, my, my little brother's father, was kind of like, you know, young love, off and on. They were together, but then they would get into it. She would put them out and all this kind of stuff. You feel what I'm saying? So, but 
to like, yo, before I get all big and pregnant and, you know, big and can't go out to the club, I'm about to use this, um, I'm about to use this to have some fun. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? She was like, it, I think it was around winter time. Around winter time, so she was like, I'm all big and pregnant, so I'm about to, be, I mean, before I get big and pregnant, I'm about to use this winter time to really be out and have fun and go to the club before I get all big and pregnant. <laughs> so our neighbor, the older um cute um the older cute woman next door, she was like, Yeah, child, come on, let's let's go out. Let's um you know what? She was like, Yeah, come on, child, come on. Yes, that's what you do, because you don't want to be out. You're not gonna be wanting to be out all big and pregnant, so you better have some fun before you had your before you had this third baby. So cool, I'll take you to the club. I like going to. And my mom, well, I need a babysitter. And her, she has a son who is 15 years old, the nice one that comes and picks up the um the trash the trash for my mom. And he's just super nice and never bullies me, so he's super nice. And so he's like 15 there. So. My mom says, oh, that's right. And he's 15. So in, in Indiana, and maybe a lot of places, I don't know. You tell me if it, in the comments if it's in your places. <laughs> in Indiana, you can be 13. You, to be like a babysitter, home alone by yourself with kids, you can be like 13. So he was like 15. And so my mom was like, yo, Perfect. That's what it is. So my mom said, "Well, I'll just leave the door open. I'll leave. I'll leave because I was not, I was nine, but I was, you know, a mature nine. So my mom would give me the keys. Like I could, I had my own key, so I could come in and out the house as I want, to, whenever I wanted to. Like as long as I like the door and da da da. So I had my own key to the house, and so." That, that day, what my mom did was like, yo, I want you to stay over Diane's house. Diane was the older woman. So I want you to stay over Diane's house and stay with there. And when I come home, when it get late, you can go to my apartment and go to sleep. But I want you to stay over here, you know, in the beginning of the night, basically. And so I was excited about staying over here because Bear, what I didn't know is that Bear had a video game. Woo! What? This is about to be popping because I didn't know he had Tecmo Ball, this little, um, I don't know if y'all remember that, but on his Nintendo, he had Tecmo Ball, which is like a football game. He had Ninja Gaiden, which you play as these, this like ninja jumping off the wall. <laughs> It was fire. So I was so excited to go over there and, you know, play his video game. Once I learned, because when they were having a conversation, he was like, oh, yeah, I got a video game and everything. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh, this is about to be fire. This is about to be sickening. So my mom get all pretty. My mom get all pretty. Now, the whole point of her going out, right, is so she can look cute and fire at the club with where her trade is going to be. My little brother, um, my little brother's father. But this is before my little brother was born. Conceived already, but before he was born. <laughs> so she wants to go to the club that he's going to be at because she wants to look all beat and cute because they done kind of broke up and separated. You know how you go and look, oh, you do you and I'm going to do me. Mm -hmm, da, 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 da. So that's where my mother is. She's like 23. So she was like, I'm gonna get all fly and I'm gonna go to the club. This nigga gonna see me looking good. No, he lost a good thing. This is what my mama on. So I'm hearing her on the phone giving all this tea. <laughs> she on that. She on one. She was like, Yo, I'm gonna look fly. And this is, and you know, this is the only time I'll be able to look fly because I'm gonna be big as a house come next summer <laughs> because that will be the time that my brother would be would be born or, you know, she'd be eight, nine months by the summertime. And so, 
she like, okay, so I'm gonna go, and that's what we're gonna do. She's talking to her friends. Yeah, I know that nigga out there, and hopefully, uh, whatever the chick was that, you know, he she basically like, yo, I'm gonna be looking fine. Anyway, so I'm excited for my mama. I used to love seeing my mom get dressed up. Like that was, I loved it. Like it was when my mom, not the most prettiest, I don't want to say that, but it, it was it was when I appreciated um, my mom's beauty. When when she would intentionally, because my mom is a woman who had, you know, who had a horrible childhood. She had a horrible childhood. Um, she is the darkest of her siblings. She was the only child, but she was raised with her cousins, and my and her cousins were light complexed. So our family, being like a color struck family, didn't treat her like she was as beautiful as she was because she wasn't as light skinned as my her cousins. Her, her, her raised like her sisters, but technically her cousins. But because I'm her child, and she is my reference to a woman, reference to beauty, like to me. She's sickly. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? To me, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's what I, because, you know, I don't know. It's just like, you know, it's your mom. So I always thought she was beautiful. She was one of the most beautiful women of my life. <laughs> and so, women of my life. And so when I would see her, put on her lipstick, put on her makeup, you know, line her lips with the black eyeliner, because, you know, that was in style back then. <laughs> A lot of lips with the black eyeliner, um, you know, curl her hair. Just she just was a oh, just a beautiful woman to me. So I would just sit and watch her, and she would she wasn't a woman who liked to wear a lot of makeup. It was just she liked it to be natural, and and she just it just was a beautiful time. It was, you know, just seeing my mom like that. It was just beautiful. And so I'm just sitting back this night. I'm just sitting back looking at her like, oh, she's about to... I, I wouldn't have said this because this wouldn't be my vernacular <laughs> or vocabulary, but I'd have been like, oh, she do know. She, oh, she's feeling her cut, honey. She's feeling it, man. She's feeling like the bitch about to tip her out and slay the kids. <laughs> that's what I was sitting there. I didn't have that language, but that's what I was sitting there happy Watching my mother do that. <laughs> Watching my mother have this experience of, I'm feeling fly. I'm looking in the mirror. The case is looking fire. <laughs> the waist is on snatched. The hair is on flow because she always had nice hair. Always had pretty legs, nice body. So my mom was looking fly. So I was happy for her. And then now I'm ready for her to go because I'm ready to go over here and play these games. <laughs> So, girl, come on. You look cute. Head on out. Because <laughs> I got a date with this Nintendo over here at their house. <laughs> so, she leaves and goes to the club. I go, of course, over to Bear's house. His mother is <laughs> not cussing him out, but saying, um, you better not be horse playing with this little boy. Like, she basically saying, don't be rough housing and honey horse playing in my motherfucking house because y'all better not tear up no shit. <laughs> she, <laughs> she cussing and saying, y'all better not tear shit up in my house. Don't play with me or I'm going to beat y'all motherfucking ass. <laughs> and so, we like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man, we won't turn nothing. <laughs> and so he busts out the game. He was like, What's up, bro? Da -da 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 -da. He does this weird little whatever shit. And I'm like, Hi. <laughs> little nine year old, little boy. And he was like, What's up? So you play video games? And I'm like, Mm hmm. He was like, What games do you play? And I tell him what games I play. And he was like, Oh, well, this is. He just started telling me about his games. I'm like, cool, let's, honey, bust that controller out so I can uh, mollywop you. Come on. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to, because I, when it comes to video games, I'm real competitive. So I'm like, and then most older boys, 
they, I've been playing games since fucking Atari, so they usually think that they fired, and I'm really fired, so I'm about to wear you out, because you're going to think that you're going to outplay me, because I'm a little nine-year-old, but I'm about to wear it. <laughs> so, he's like, all right, all right, cool. So, he hands me the controller, smoking this motherfucking ass, because I had already knew how to play Ninja Gaiden, already knew how to play um, Tecmo Ball, little tricks and secrets in my that my stepdad had fucking taught me. So I'm like, ah, we about to wear this out. So I'm wearing him out. He laughing. He laughing because he don't realize that I'm that I'm good. And so now he's getting into competitive mode and wearing it out. So we're having a great fucking time. And so it starts to get late. And he was like, man, I'm tired of playing this. Do you want to play Truth or Dare? I was like, what's that? I never heard of that. And he was like, Truth or Dare. And I was like, oh, I ain't never heard I don't I never heard of that. What's the game is that? How do you play that? He was he grabbed the controller, my controller, and his controller and put it down. So this is how you play. If it's my turn, you ask me truth or dare. And I get to say truth or dare. And you gotta ask me a question where I gotta tell you the one hundred percent truth. If I lie, you get to frog me in my arm. And then if I say dare, you get to tell me to do something. And if I don't do it, you get to frog me in my arm. And I'm like, okay. And then when it's your turn, the opposite. I ask you truth or dare. And you tell you the truth. You say truth. I got to ask you something that you tell the truth on. And I, I got to dare you something if you say dare. And I was like, okay. I never played this before. But it's okay. I don't understand why this at the time that I'm nine, I don't understand how this is going to be fun. But, all right, I'll play, <laughs> you know. And so, he says, all right, you go first. So, truth or dare? And I say, mm, truth. And so, he asks me a question. And I say, I say whatever the answer to the question is. And, and he was like, all right, I believe you. I think that's the truth. And I was like, all right, you truth are there. And he says truth. And I say, oh, okay. Um, have you ever, what did I say? I don't know. I just asked him something. You know how truth are there works. We just asking each other back and forth. So it got to the point where he, when he asked me, I said, like, I said dare. And no, no, no. I had said, we had, we, we had said dares and truths. And the dares was quite simple, like, mm, you got to drink all of this water, or um, you got to jump um, <laughs> from this many stairs to the bottom. <laughs> Something really, really simple, but playful. And But then over time of us playing Truth or Dare, it started to get more and more and more sexual. For me as a kid... It started off as funny sexual, like, like you pull your pants down and run to the curb and run back. And everybody laughing. That's what it would be. But because I'm a kid and that's funny sexual, it would be if he has, if he tells me to do it, I would tell him to do something funny sexual too. Since you just had me doing this silly shit, I'm going to have you do this shit, do silly shit too. He told me to go to the curb naked. And because it was my turn to dare him, I dared him to run all the way down the street naked. I would take him further. Whatever silliness he did to me, I would make him do it, but it would go further. But what I didn't know as a child, as a nine-year-old child, is that I'm literally playing into what he wants me to do. Because I'm taking him further, and he's going to continue to take me further. Except it started to change. It started to not be silly sexual. It started to be me doing sexual things to him. Now, when I got older and these things started to happen, I would clock them. Because as a queer child, I've had conversations with other queer people and it would, and I've, I've, I've heard these things happen to people with other other peers and da 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 da, da. 
it is when a when you're a queer child, that queerness is seen by other people, and how people respond to it. Just as I explained earlier, people can be really harsh and negative, but anybody who it also can be really sexual and playful. This has to happen with an adult that I that I remember, but with people my age or maybe like teenagers, if there was any, it they would try to do sexual stuff to me, like not um, not try to. It just would it would make me so uncomfortable that I wouldn't want to be around them. Like it would be y'all know that feeling like. When your adult gets, this never happened to me with an adult, but you know, if it has happened with you, adult, it's like with that, that creepy uncle, that creepy, when you, when, that you just don't want to be around. You see what I'm saying? Because, oh, you're getting weird. You're doing stuff that, that's making me feel uncomfortable. And so, but, but even with peers, your age, you, when you're thinking about it, it's like, with peers, it's just a different thing because particularly my mother, she prepared me for these weird feelings from adults and I could just either get out of it or I could tell her and get out of it. She would read and go off, da, da, da. But with peers, it was a whole different thing because this is peers and I didn't associate them with like a predator, like an older person, like, a, um, like an adult, like an adult man. It was always, I thought, you know, I always thought it was adult man. So... In this scenario, because how he's playing it and it's getting sexual over time and very subtly, it's actually turning me on as a little nine-year-old. It's actually becoming, um, like I'm, mm, like you, I don't, when you're younger and you haven't explored your body and explored your sexuality and blah, 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 there's just like these little feelings, these little butterflies that you get in your stomach, these little feelings that you know now as an adult, but when I was little, I don't, I don't remember having them. It, it felt, um, it was like, mm, you know, getting erections and stuff like that. You didn't. You know, you didn't have these little, I didn't know how to explain them, but that it's, it's, as we keep going, I am feeling like, ooh, I'm going to be able, I remember thinking that I'm going to be able to see his privates and being excited to see his privates, but he hasn't gotten to that point. Do you see what I'm saying? I remember thinking, like, ooh, if we can if we keep playing this game, because even when I dared him to run down the street naked, and he did, he was still covering up his piece, and I'm like, ooh, if I, I'm going to be able to, like the next dare I give him, I'm going to make sure he don't cover it up. <laughs> and so this is what I'm thinking, and this is what I'm thinking in my little nine-year-old mind. But what I don't know <laughs> What I don't know is this is all going along with his, his 15 year old plan. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what ends up happening. He ends up daring me to let him stick his piece in my booty. And in that moment, I'm like, no. <laughs> Like, that sounds, how would you want to do that? Like, whoa, like, I'm just thinking as a nine-year-old, like, why? Like, huh? No. But then part of me is like, maybe. It, it's part of me is like, I don't know what to do in this situation. It's like, I kind of want to, but I kind of don't. Because now... Now I'm having these feelings of, wait, am I supposed to be doing this? Now it's starting to be, hmm, what is happening? Now I'm clocking. Now I'm starting to clock it. Now I'm starting to feel 
some shame around it. Like, oh, if I do this, is this gay? Like, I wouldn't have said gay. Like, I wouldn't have said that. But I would have, it started to be shameful. Then it started to be um, ex- erotic and exciting. And it just was like this amalgamation of, of feelings of, of being turned on, being shamed, being like, what do I need to be ashamed about? He's asking me to do it. Is this gonna like is he is he doing this because he think I'm playing? Is he doing this because he's clocking my queerness? Like, whoa, like what's because now I'm feeling that this is not this was a planned thing. So now I'm like, oh, I'm in this web. <laughs> like, oh shit, I'm stuck on this web now. I thought that I was in control. I thought that I was like, ooh, I'm gonna be able to see his demon. <laughs> But then once I realized, no, baby, you are the one that's getting played in this situation. And so I say, and so I say, no, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, all right, so now I get to punch you. I was like, nah, um, no, because over the, over this, this time, there were some things that I said no to, not this sexual stuff. It was other stuff that I said, I said no to. Um, I think he told me to break a window with a rock or something. Something crazy that I knew I would get a whooping for. <laughs> and he had punched me and it was, oh God, and my arm was already hurting. Because I don't know if you remember you was little and if somebody punched you like with their knuckle, it'll make a knock come up on your arm. <laughs> it's weak. And when we were little, we called it a frog. Because it would be a little, a little lump that would pop up and then go back down. So we called it frog. Because it, I don't know. I don't know why we call it frogging. But we call it frogging. <laughs> frogging you. And so, he had frogged me. And he had came up so, and I was always a skinny little boy. And he had came up so big. I was like, oh, and it hurt it. And so, this time when he said he was going to hit me, I was like, oh, man, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, mm-mm. you can't hit me either. He's like, you didn't do the dare. So now it's in a situation where either I got to take the hit or I got to do the dare. And I said, no, I didn't want to do the dare because you're asking me to put, let you put your thing in my butt. This is all like, oh, but I don't want to take the hit. And he's trying to convince me to do it. He is like trying to convince me to do it. So I give in as a little nine-year-old. Remember, he's 15. And we go to... How the apartments is set up, there is like this um, behind the building. So the front of the buildings like is like there's like these balconies on on the first floor. Is we wouldn't call it a balcony; it's more like a porch. But then it, the ones above it is like porches. But in the back of the building, there are these fences, these fenced in little porch areas that like people so they can have a private. Like if you had a a grill out there nobody will be able to see you grilling because there's these big tall fences on the bottom floor of the building and so we go back there and this is this is when he tries to penetrate me and so he i feel him trying to feel he pulls my pants down i feel him trying to feel where my hole was and he's feeling Feeling, feeling, feeling. And once he finally feels it, he puts his piece there and put his hands on my hips and tries to push it in. Now, he's trying to spit. <laughs> oh, school. He's trying to spit and lubricate my, my cell, my hole, with his spit and the piece. So, he pushes it in and it is painful as fuck. I'm like, uh-uh. Mm-mm. <laughs> No, no. And he was like, that was my thumb. But he's lying because I feel his hands on my hips. So I'm like, no, that wasn't your thumb. I know that wasn't your thumb. Mm -mm, I'm done. I let you do it because I felt it go in. (laughs) And so he was like, no, I didn't even go in. I didn't even go in. So he's trying to, once I was like, "Mm -mm," and start pulling up my pants, he's trying to, um, he trying to convince me that he that, that was his thumb 
and he didn't do it. I said, I know you did it because I, your hands was on my hips while I felt it go in. So I already did it. He's like, mm -mm, I'm going to have to punch you. No, because if you punch me, I'm going to tell my mother that you just stuck your pee pee in my booty and you're going to get in trouble. So this is just the end of it. And we come out of the, we come out of the thing and we sit down on the curb and he sits down next to me and he was like, man, you can't tell nobody. You can't do that. You can't do that because then I get in trouble. I was like, I'm not going to tell nobody, but you ain't about to make me let you stick it in me no more because I know you're not supposed to be doing it. And he was like, nah, I'm not. He looked down at the ground. He's like, nah, I'm not. We was just playing truth or dare. And I was like, yeah, that's what it is, but mm -mm, that's not how I want to play. I'd rather just play the game. I don't like this game no more. And he was like, all right, we ain't got to play. We can just play the game. And we went back in the house and we played the game quietly until he got sleepy and he went upstairs and went to sleep. And I went back. I took my key and went back to my mama's house and unlocked the door and sat down in the bed and just thought about everything that had happened and stayed up until my mama got home. My mama came in. And she looked in the room and said, hey, how was it? And I was like, it was fun. And she was like, what y'all do all night? What you eat? And I told her that he had fixed us some, um, some sandwiches and some chips. And he was like, all right. My mom was like, all right, did you, did you have fun though? Like, did you play the video game? Did you like, what happened? Like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, we just played the video game. And did nothing. That was about it. And she's like, okay. All right. We'll go back to sleep. And I went to sleep and woke up the next morning. So the next morning, I asked my mom, how was her night? <laughs> and she's in her robe. She got this, um, this pretty ass, like little blue robe. She had, you know, it's it's like afternoon, probably like eleven, and she's like, she was like, oh, it was fun, I had a good time, and we just talking and just she had cooked us cooked breakfast and we sitting there eating, and I told her that I wanted to get the video game that we were playing over Bear's house, which is Ninja Ninja Gaiden, because that's the same game that Robert had, but because they had broke up, Robert had took some of his games to where he was in it temporarily until he came back to the house up uh, to our house so I was like I think I wanted her to buy me my own game so if she kicked Robert out <laughs> I could have my own <laughs> so it was a great little fun little morning and all, all of a sudden it's a knock on the door and so I come to the door and I answer who is it and it was some dude and so I, op I open the door, and this dude, when I look at him, he looks like like he is visibly a gay boy. Like, like you know, even though I'm young, I know what a gay boy looks like. Like, I know what a gay boy looks like, and this is a gay boy. Like, he's feminine, tight clothes, makeup, a gay boy, like a butch queen. And so I'm like, I'm gagged because I, my mama don't got no gay friends. <laughs> my mom is a, a homophobe. <laughs> and so this gay boy coming to the door is gagging me. Like, what is happening? Like, oh. And, I, and he says, is Deanna here? And my nine-year-old self says, yes. One second. Mama. And my mother comes out of the dining room and around the corner to the door. And my mother has on the road. And she says, hey, how may I help you? And my mother tries to cover up my face. Because I'm gagging at this being a gay boy. <laughs> I'm gagging. So my mother tries to push me like behind her. Because I'm not as, at this point, I'm not as tall as my mom. I think I'm probably like, mom's like 5'2". 
I had to be like four or something, like four eleven or so. I don't know. And so I'm not. No, no, no. no I can't be that tall. Uh, anyway, I'm probably to my mom's shoulder. And so she pushed me to the back of her because I, my eyes are gagging at this gay boy. And my mother was like, how may I help you? Hey, how are you? And the gay boy said, do you know Robert? And she was like, yes. Why? And he was like, the gay boy says, well, I know Robert too. And you might want to go to Bellflower. And my mother said, why would I need to go to Bellflower? Now, Bellflower is a free health clinic that you go get STDs checks at. And so when my mama asked him, why does she need to go to Bellflower? And who are you? Why would you say that? He says, just go to Bellflower, Miss Thing, and walk down the, walk down the steps out to the car and drove off. So, as a little nine-year-old, I don't know. I don't know the context of anything that's happening. So I don't know. I knew, I know. I knew what Bellflower was, and I knew it had something to do with STDs. We didn't call them STDs, though. I don't know what we called them back then. But I, I knew Bellflower was the joke among the adults about getting a disease. I knew that that was the joke. I didn't know anything about diseases. Anything about Anything, how you catch them, anything like that. But I knew that when I'm, as a child, listening to adults talk about sex and the joke, and the jokes that they were making, Bellflower was a part of the jokes of that revolved around STDs, sex, da 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 So, my mother calls Robert. And on the phone, Robert is like, I don't know the fuck you're talking about. So my mother takes her ass, her happy ass, <laughs> down to Bellflower. And my mother has gonorrhea. Gags her. Because she's like, how would this motherfucker know that I got gonorrhea? This gay boy that I've never met in my life. Motherfucker, you have to either be messing with him. There's no way... That he could know. This is what she told tell Robert. <laughs> There's no way that he could know that I have gonorrhea, motherfucker. How the fuck? My mother's going off. How the fuck did this gay boy know that I got? How? What the fuck? Da 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 da. Don't don't know at all. <laughs> She's gagged. And so she gets on her some penicillin. Is it penicillin? Whatever that you take, I think it, at the time it, penicillin was hot. <laughs> That's what you take to um, to get rid of gonorrhea or whatever. So she got her penicillin. Now, mind you, she's pregnant, not early pregnancy. And so she gets on her penicillin and and I guess you heal from it, of course. Um, heal from it, of course. And I'm this whole scenario because I'm a kid. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening to the situ in the situation. I don't know. I just know that this gay boy came to the door and told my mom to go to Bellflower. And she did, and she had something. And my mother fell out with Robert. They stayed broke up for the longest I ever seen them break up at that time. But that was the first time that I had been in any kind of situation with anal. And it led to my aversion to anal sex for a long time. <laughs> I didn't have sex, actual penetra penetrative sex, until I was like 16 and I was 9 at this time. So I had opportunities <laughs> in between 9 and 16 with my peers to do stuff like that. But I had an aversion to anal sex because of the situation with Bear. And then this is also the first time 
that I was introduced to sexually transmitted diseases when it comes to you and your partner, just in relation, not to me, I wasn't, I didn't get yeah, STD, but my mom did and her conversations that she was having with adults and how that situation transpired. Not only am I having, this is my first inkling of an STD conversation, sex education conversation. This is also my first inkling that I will learn later about the trade. Because I didn't know what the trade was. But I knew that gay boy knew something that I didn't even know about my stepdaddy. The trade.